Good evening, everyone. A warm welcome to one and all from the side of IEEE Robotics and Automation Societies of IEEE SB NSSE, SJCET, LBSI TW, and RIS Kerala section. First of all, thank you for the huge response of yesterday's session that was really overwhelming. Insights in 20 is an event for all of you who are tired of the lengthy sessions. Here's a 20 minute talk on the modern robotics or automation technologies. And today's amazing topic is space robotics. The session will be of 20 minutes, and you can put down all of your thoughts as the, on the topic in the chat box during the session, and we would come back to them and clear after clear them just after the 20 minute talk. Moving on, we are extremely contented to have Mr. Sayan Kayes, the CEO and MND of Aerolabs Private Limited, which the company which focuses its development on autonomous systems. Our honorable speaker, who is a tool and an engineer by profession and a passionate space enthusiast and explorer by heart, has worked with MIT ADT Pune, Ahmedabad University, and other prestigious universities in development of autonomous systems. Mr. Sayan KS is currently working towards building a digital magazine exclusive for the space technology domain. So with no further delay, let us welcome Mr. Sayan KS to take over the platform. Thank you. Oh, thanks for that wonderful uh, introduction, Pavati. Um, so uh, today's topic is a really wonderful topic. It's on space robotics. Uh, what an amazing topic to start this discussion on. So we all know about robotics and we all know about space technology as well. So what is space robotics exactly? Uh, this year being... Uh, taken over by COVID-19, most of the developments in uh, all the sectors are down, but in space technology industry, it's been a really great year so far. We saw the launches of the SpaceX um, Crew-1, we saw the launch of the, um, uh, we saw the first launch in uh, 2020 by ISRO. Uh, yesterday, we saw the launch and a sample return mission um, taken care by uh, the Chinese and NASA is also planning to nuke an asteroid from hitting Earth. So it's pretty good and pretty wild in the space domain. Um, so um, let me share my screen. Um, um, so uh, as an introduction, I would like to say um, Space is one of the uh, final frontiers that we should explore because every person that you know, uh, taking in the words uh, of Carl Sagan, the famous astrophysicist, um, every person who you know, you love, um, every single person lived and died on this um, pale blue dot uh, circling the sun. Uh, imagine um, maybe the next generation of yourself um, will colonize uh, maybe Mars or Titan and all. But um, it's a very rather difficult process, but uh, it's a process that we should um, uh, get our hands into. So space being the final frontier and uh, we being an explorer, uh, we humans having an explorer mindset, a curious mindset to explore and conquer everything that we see from the mountains to Mars to even the interstellar space. And um, to have an upper hand on um, getting into other planets, probably into other galaxies, we should have a helping hand. That's where the concept of space robotics um, comes into play because it, it's really hard to put a person on, let's say, the moon. We have done it, but it's really hard. And if something happens to the payload, the payload being a living, breathing, loving person, there is, if something happened to that person, that would be tremendously overwhelming. overwhelming. So that's why we are taking in the aid of space robotics and space robots. So what is space robotics uh, basically it's a sector that deals with fabrication assembly testing operation of anything and everything that is robotics or 
uh, is autonomously operated or is an automated system and it all these operations are either taking care in microgravity or in low earth orbit uh, or in extraterrestrial environments um, uh, later uh, 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 this year we saw the launch of um, our prestigious mission to moon the um, Pragyan that was an interesting mission uh, of Chandrayaan 2 along with the rover named Pragyan. Uh, it was a partially successful mission, but uh, that gave a really uh, speed to the way people are seeing space and the way people are getting introduced to space. And we are seeing a culture uh, evolving around space and space technology. That's a really interesting thing. Uh, coming back to space robotics, it basically deals with anything and everything uh, that it, uh, is related to space. It might be a robotic rover that goes on Mars or a sample collecting robot that is operated from moon or a dragonfly kind of flying robot that operates in Titan or Europa. And so that is space robotics. And to add into that, it's one of the toughest field of engineering to get into because it's really hard to test these systems because we don't have the necessary things to create sufficient microgravity or these extraterrestrial environments. If you take in the case of the Curiosity rover, which was um, which landed in Mars on late 2012, uh, it uses the wheels are made out of pure titanium. It's one of the toughest materials. It's one of the main materials that is used in aerospace engineering, even those wheels started to erode in the tough conditions of space. You have to take care of the temperature swings from minus 100 to plus to minus 100 to 200 degrees Celsius. You have to worry about the uh, electromagnetic radiation from the sun. You have to shield all your electronics from the, the solar radiations the solar winds and you have to have a rocket launch that system and it has to travel a really long distance and it should go to a sleep mode then it should come back and you should have a great understanding of physics orbital mechanics astrophysics thermodynamics and fluid mechanics to create such uh, systems uh, so it's a very tough uh, environment to work in but we have to develop such systems to experiment our systems and to push the limits of human ingenuity so what all types of robots are out there we are pretty sure there are some aliens out there but let's talk about what all types of robots are out there we have helper bots which are basically personal assistant kind of robots for astronauts or uh, those can help and interact people that is living in microgravity environments like in the international space station uh, or maybe in the future it could assist people who are going to mars or moon then we have explorers explorers are one of the key people who that uh, key robotic systems that <clears throat> taking care of the all the exploration things uh, things before humans reach a particular place uh, it test it might test whether there is water on there or the rock or certain types of regular rocks that maybe in the near future holds water or the polar ice caps of mars has the ability um, to sustain life on water uh, so a great example for explorer boats that you will be really familiar is the Curiosity and Pragyan of India. Then we have automated systems. Automated systems are basically uh, everything in between explorers and helper boats. Um, maybe a satellite that is or a manned satellite that is orbiting um, Saturn or Venus or a lander that lands on Venus. Uh, we have a, we have built over time multiple operate um, automated systems like uh, taking in the case of India we have multiple um, automated system like the Mangalyaan we have Chandrayaan one we have all these kinds of missions coming up like uh, 
and the uh, solar probes and all. So these are the three major types of, of robotic systems that uh, is out there. Uh, so let's look deep into some of the examples of space robots. Uh, these are helper bots. We have Dexter. Dexter is a robotic arm uh, that is uh, placed in the International Space Station. And it used its lengthy arm to hold astronauts. It can do repairs on the International Space Station autonomously. Um, it was actually a gift to International Space Station by uh, Canadian Space Agency. Um, and it's one of the most integral part of the International Space Station because uh, of these cargo missions that is being carried out uh, from and to the International Space Station. All these cargo modules are captured and docked with the International Space Station by the Dexter robotic arm. It was implemented in the late 2018 and it's currently in operation in International Space Station. Then we have the famous project by uh, NASA. It's called the Robonaut. Robonaut was a very prestigious project by NASA because uh, it, it was the first humanoid robot to reach the orbit. And unfortunately, it got break down in 2010 and NASA retrieved it back. Uh, in this project, it was actually meant to help astronauts in carrying things and helping in uh, maintenance uh, of the International Space Station as well. Then we have a very interesting robot. It's called the Simon. Uh, it is a robot system. Uh, it's an AI enabled robotic system. It's an interactive personal assistant kind of system uh, that could work um, in the conditions of International Space Station. The biggest advantage of Simon is that Simon has certain uh, thrusters, uh, cold gas, gas thrusters that enables Simon to move in the low gravity environments from one position to another. Simon is an interactive assistant helping the, helping the astronauts to go through all these tremendous situations of space and away from Earth. Uh, then let's look into the uh, next, we have explorers. So the greatest example that I could give you on the explorer part is Curiosity. It's also co called the Martian Laboratory. It has all sorts of systems. It has a drill, it has a laser scanner, it has a very cool camera, and it has a very great um, driving system, uh, which the wheels are made of titanium. It can, um, it's currently, uh, operating uh, in Mars. it The fuel system of this particular robot is a, a nuclear based system. So it has a very long duration to operate. So uh, it uses these uh, nuclear based uh, power systems because it's long endurance missions. If you take in the case of uh, Mars, it has its, its, its distance from Sun is really uh, high and there is all sorts of dust storms that could maybe block this uh, sunlight from hitting the rover and its ability to charge and overcome these missions. So that's why NASA put it a um, really great um, um, nuclear based power supply on this particular robot. We have a lot of examples for uh, explorer type robots. We have the, uh, we have missions like the Chang'e 4, which was deployed by China. We have the Pragyan. We have the Perseverance rover coming up on the Mars 2020 mission by NASA. Uh, so these are some of the famous uh, um, Explorer reports out there. Uh, then we have everything in between, like the automated system. We have a famous mission that was carried out by NASA exploring the asteroid uh, Bennu in order to understand how the solar system was formed because this particular asteroid which is named Bennu has a particular chemical composition to the rocks. Uh, the rocks are something called regolith so it is 
uh, basically looking into the history of how the solar system was formed, the early days of how the solar system was, um, was formed. Uh, OSIRIS REx is actually an acronym for Orbital Spectral Interpretation, Re Regulate, uh, Resource Identification, uh, Security, Regulate, Explorer. It's a really big name. Uh, it was actually a co-mission between NASA and the famous aerospace company Lockheed Martin. Then we have the Martian Sky Crane, which was used to deploy the Curiosity rover as well as the Perseverance rover in the Martian atmosphere without using a uh, parachute channel. It uses its thrusters to land. It's a very effective system. Um, it was developed by NASA along with Jet Propulsion Lab. Uh, then we have our proudest uh, automated system. It was called the Mongolian, the Mars Orbiter Mission uh, of our, our country. It was another um, big breakthrough in development of these automated systems. Um, there are a lot of automated systems. They are technically not robots, but uh, it's something in between. It's not quite robotic systems, nor quite uh, completely an autonomous system. So these are the three types of systems that are out there. So, so let's look into some of the future projects that we uh, will see coming up, as well as some of the projects that is being currently carried out. We have the Dragonfly mission which would be the first quadcopter kind of flying robot on another planet. And it was sent, it is going to be sent to uh, Titan. Uh, Titan has a particular um, interest for scientists because, because um, Titan is the only other place in the solar system where there is liquid uh, to be found even though the liquid is methane and ethane uh, scientists are equally waiting is there any worms or any other microbial organisms living in this methane or ethane pools and it's going to be a very interesting mission uh, it was planned to launch on uh, late 2024 and it was expected to land on titan uh, around uh, 20 30 and it's going to be a really interesting mission you can look more into that on nasa nasa speeders then we have other two three little robots uh these ones are called astro b we have three little uh cube kind of robots deployed in uh, the international space station currently we have bumble we have queen and uh, we have these uh, three robots being deployed uh, on International Space Station. We have Bumble, Q, uh, Queen, and Honey. Uh, it's, it's three robotic systems. It's a floating robotic system. It's a personal assistant kind of system. So uh, we are seeing a trend towards using robotic systems in International Space Station and other uh, microgravity environments because all the people who are living in these kinds of environments has a really tight schedule they have to sleep they get tired really quickly so uh nasa and other agencies are uh, currently working to use robots wherever it is possible then we have ingenuity which is going to be uh a part of the Mars 2020 mission. And as we are speaking on this webinar, it's currently hurtling through space and vacuum to the red planet. And Ingenuity is going to be the first heavier than aircraft to fly on another planet. It's a monocopter, a helicopter kind of thing. And uh, you could look on to that as well in the uh, NASA page. It's a really interesting project. Uh, it would fly into the Martian atmosphere. It will capture some really uh, high resolution images of the Martian surface flying. Uh, it will demonstrate the flying capabilities. And it's really hard to fly in Mars because 
uh, the atmospheric pressure and the number of molecules that is present in the atmosphere is really low compared to Earth. So the same aircraft uh, propellers should uh, spin really high a uh, high speed so that would create tremendous pressure on the motor as well as it will introduce all the blade tips to all the subsonic and transonic flows uh, which would be really hard to uh, engineer these kinds of systems to withstand those kinds of speeds it would basically rip uh, the propellers apart and nasa come up with a really good idea to use materials like uh, carbon fiber in developing the propeller. Uh, the propeller is so lightweight, um, it enables it to rotate at a very higher speed, thus enabling flight on another planet. Uh, then we have another mission, which was actually carried out yesterday. It's called the Chenga 5 by uh, Chinese. Uh, they are returning, currently in the process of returning a sample from the moon back to earth after the apollo missions by nasa and it took off with the samples it was a 2 kg payload uh, it took off it's currently coming back to um, earth it was uh, set to uh, land on earth by mid december uh, so it would be really great to see some uh, moon rock and moon dust coming back to earth after apollo period and uh, it's doing science on how the moon formed what type also it's looking into the volcanic activities of the moon then we have lima uh, lima is it was supposed to work in the international space station it's a limbed robot it's it has these four feet that it can use to grip onto things so it was actually meant for repairing parts in the outside of the international space station but it quite didn't flew and NASA uh, decommissioned that project in 2019. But Lima uh, uses a really advanced artificial intelligence to uh, plan its locomotion around things. So it is being currently used in uh, other projects as well. Uh, Lima actually stands for Limped Excursion Mechanical Utility Robot. Uh, to add into this, uh, in the March 2020 mission, which is carrying the perseverance as well as ingenuity, there is something called MOXIE. MOXIE is an experiment uh, carried out by uh, MIT to generate uh, uh, oxygen in Mars using a process called uh, solid electrolysis. Uh, so this would enable our visit to Mars uh, in the near future so this is a small diagram how we started and where we are right now we had the local one which was uh, by the ussr uh, it was the first robotic system on moon uh, we have uh, uh, the voyager which was sent to fly to uh, the interstellar space exploring how all it started and all we have pathfinder which was the first robot on uh, Mars. We have Hayabusa by JAXA, Japanese Space Agency, which was an asteroid sample return mission. We have Dexter, the robotic arm. We have Curiosity. Then we have Osiris Rex, which was also a sample return mission planned by NASA. Uh, we have the Perseverance robot, which was uh, planned to land on uh, Mars on 2021. So, uh, so what will be the next? Sorry. What will be the next generation of, of robotic systems? Uh, in the next generation of robotic systems, we'll be uh, seeing uh, mineral extraction and mining robots from companies like uh, Astron Mining Corporation and Planetary Resources. We will have orbital maintenance fueling robots that will fly to orbit, uh, refuel uh, uh, a particular satellite in orbit uh, and we have extraterrestrial habitat construction um, where uh, we would fly to another planet and we would uh, start constructing a uh, habitat this would be the next generation of robots 
Then we have all Daisy Explorers. Hello. Yeah, so Sorry to as know. well as Hello. Right, yeah, uh, which was. Uh, uh, and we have Voimitra, uh, which was another AI enabled robotics system by in there. So we have uh, companies like Lockheed Martin coming up with Osiris Rex. Or Hello. Or Crop to go to Daniel. Hello. Yeah. Uh, Made in space, which is closing in 3D printing technology. Uh, we have Honeybee Robotics, which is uh, planning to build drills and all kinds of things for uh, orbital exploration. So, guys, uh, this was a very speedy talk. Uh, so, let's get into some of questions from your side. Hello, am I audible? Hello. Um, Shada, your uh, last thing was not clear. Uh, there is Hello, some network issue, I think. Hello. Yes, yeah, Solomon, you are breaking off. Um, your last two slides were not clear to us. There were some network issues. Your audio was breaking. Hello. 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 So uh, uh, it's uh, breaking up. I'm sorry. Hello, can you hear me now? Hello. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? It is audible, but there is a disturbance. Uh, probably I cannot hear you correctly. OK, it is audible, but there is a disturbance, a slight disturbance. That's... Yeah, hello. Can you put it on the chat box, please? OK. You're kind of breaking up. Hello. Oh, I also know. Can you hear? Can you hear me now? Your voice is breaking, actually. Okay, I have something. Okay, okay. 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 so okay, so let's okay. get okay. So I have my yeah. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Hello. Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. We can hear you. Okay. Uh, so um, you have you had an issue with the last two slides, right?
Should I repeat them? So guys, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Better okay. than before. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, so, uh, oh, hello. Yes, it is audible. Okay, uh, so we had some doubts, right? Or uh, should I repeat the last two slides? No, you shouldn't repeat. It was okay. 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 It is okay. I'm um, really sorry for the bad network connection. That's fine. Okay, so do we have some questions from your side? Thank you, Mr. Sayan, for the wonderful talk. Uh, it, was, it was really an informative session. So we can move on to a doubt clearing session. Uh, participants, you can. Uh, put down your doubts in the comment section of chat box, live chat box in the YouTube. We will be now waiting for the doubts for two minutes. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yes. So do we have some doubts? Not yet. I think they are typing or something. So may I read out the doubts, sir, so that you can answer them? Yeah, you have questions, right? Yes. Okay. So, okay, uh, so participant Emmanuel Manu has asked, uh, what do you do in this field, sir? Hello? Hello, sir. Yeah, go ahead, please. OK, uh, Emmanuel Manu has asked that, what do you do in this field, sir? That is a doubt, I think. So what you can do in this field? So uh, if you are coming from mechanical engineering side, you could look into material science, which is a really great topic uh, to study in the future. Uh, because uh, in space robotics, it's actually about the materials as well as about the systems. Because you cannot actually use metals or any kinds of things when you are in space. Because there is a certain limitation. Because there is a, a process called cold welding. Uh, due to the uh, 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 non-presence of uh, uh, oxygen, uh, when met two metals are close in space, if they are touching, there's a chance that they will fuse permanently. So uh, people are coming up with all these kinds of uh, interesting materials for these uh, applications like um, advanced carbon fiber manufacturing and all. If you're from electronics or computer science, you could actually get more into developments of uh, robotic systems. Um, it's a quite vast topic. It covers most of the engineering fields. Uh, you should have uh, good knowledge in material science, electronics. Uh, how can you prevent uh, these systems from uh, these electromagnetic pulses coming from the sun? So it's a really vast topic. You can actually start with um, fundamental understanding of space. So how things work in space and how, how 
like let's say fluids react in space and all so that's the baby steps that you can get into and i could actually recommend you few uh, uh places where you can actually get a good uh, information regarding this there are communities out there as well as great youtube uh, content creators like seeker seeker is an exclusive channel related to space then we have a famous guy called the everyday astronaut is a very famous youtuber out there he has some great content that in, both in space technology as well in uh, space robotics so you can actually look into that as well okay thank you so there is another question may i read it okay please uh, one of our participants, Joseph Thomas, says okay. he had heard about the cultivation of plants on space. So mm -hmm. he asked that, does it include any robot's help? Uh, yes, because let's imagine you are growing a pumpkin in space. Uh, so you, are, you have to plant the seeds. Uh, it's an experiment, no? So there's a lot of things that you have to take into fact. You have to water the plants. You have to have the pH of the soil measured, and it should be sorted out. Uh, you might have to uh, take these trays from one place to another. Um, these things can be automated in the future. That's why NASA has sent up these three robots called Honey, Queen, uh, and Bumble to space. Uh, it's a part of a mission called Astro B. So they are actually planning to take care of these submissions that actually does not require human involvement. And this uh, in turn uh, help in maybe growing plants and in cultivation in microgravity. I hope the answer was clear. Thank you. And Another person has asked how it is related with computer science. Yo, uh, so coming to computer science, we have like uh, a lot of things has to be taken care of through co coding because every robotic systems out there that is being currently operated, even if it's Curiosity, Perseverance, or a next generation robot that has to operate even in Titan, which is really far away from earth all these systems use a predetermined mission path that is sent from earth because you know it takes certain amount of time to data to be sent from here to there so there will be a delay uh, uh, even with the most high speed technologies there will be a delay for the communication so it's really hard to actually have a human landing a rover on Mars or in Titan or flying a robot um, in Mars or in uh, Venus. So all this has to be taken care of using uh, a set of instructions that has to be pre-planned and pre-coded and pre-uploaded before all the other things have to be taken care. So computer science has a huge importance in space robotics. It starts from the mission planning to the execution of that particular mission. So computer science is another great field. Also the adoption of artificial intelligence and machine learning and deep learning uh, has started this um, uh, automation process in space. If you have seen the um, movie Space Odyssey, uh, it has an artificial intelligent robot actually taking over the spaceship and the space mission. I hope in the near future we, we would have such uh, robots that is that much intelligent and it would help us to expand to uh, from a civilization to a multi-planetary uh, uh, species. And computer science has a huge importance in this particular sector, uh, particular sector. Thank you for the wonderful answer. And uh, another person has asked, is there any relevance for IoT in space research? Um, 
IoT because it's actually a great question, by the way. So uh, there is, uh, let's say, IoT depends on these uh, servers and all these interconnectivity. So coming to space, it's really hard to, uh, let's say, communicate. Now, thank you. Now, thank you, everyone, who took the valuable time to be present here virtually. I hope you all had a great experience. One more thing, the feedback form for the session is being provided in the chat box of our YouTube. Please don't forget to fill out the form as only participants who fills out the form will be awarded the certificates. So hope you get it. And I would also like to inform all of you about another session on multi-robot systems by Dr. Renjit R. Nair, Assistant Professor of IIIT Pune, which is taking place tomorrow. Hoping your participation tomorrow too. And so once again, thank you everyone for the immense support. You are winding up the session. Thank you.